The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! This, this is Mick Shot streaming live on DallasCowboys.com and the official Dallas Cowboys app. Now, here are Bill Jones, Everson Walls, and Mickey Spagnola. You can put it in three-inch headlines. <laughs> we will win the ball there game. There you go, baby. Look at Mickey Spagnola over there. He's shaking his head. He can't believe that we're going to start with that today. Here inside the SWBC Podcast Studio at the Star in Frisco, Mickey has just returned from Ford Center where interviews are being conducted as we speak. He's got some breaking news and. Yes, the Cowboys will win the ball game on Sunday. You Mickey. want you want Dak's response to it? Yes. S. Yes. Mm. There, there you go. Whoa. All right. Whoa. Yeah. Quiet boy. Quiet right? boy. Yeah. <laughs> well, we found out he wasn't a quiet boy when we saw Howard oh, Knox. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. There, 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 there are no yeah, choir boys on no choir on, boy. on Hard Knocks. You mm-hmm. don't make the cut if you're a choir no, boy. They won't put that video on. That's right. So, I, Mickey, I, I I believe his. Uh, his exact words were, does it put us in a bad spot? Um, he just voiced it, and now we got to be accountable for his words. Uh-oh. So do you want to explain to the masses out there who have not heard the breaking news of this morning from Mike McCarthy's press conference? Yeah, that wasn't as breaking as what I've got for I you. I know you got Uh-oh. something else for me. But uh, Mike McCarthy basically said I have the that quote. Oh, well, you there you it? go. Let's go. Right, so Chris Christopher. Bean. Here you go. We know what people think of us. We love that. Uh, we're comfortable who we are, where we are. Uh, but I'm excited about what's in front of us because, you know, we, we, you know we're, we're going to win this game. Um, I'm confident in that and just, to, you know, the prep that's going into it. Uh, but, you know, more importantly, we're going to, you know, we want to improve too along the way. So I think that's all part about what the challenge of December football gives you. So, bulletin board material. Well, yes, you know what? You. That's what that is. <laughs> I think I was going to head there, Bill. Bulletin board material. I, I would think, though, that Ron Rivera basically said the same thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We're going to win this game. Mm-hmm. We're going. We're going to get four straight. So, I like the way he put it, though. Uh, it was very honest and direct. I know what people think of us. And then you know, they think that we're soft. They think that we're inconsistent. Uh, they think that we're front runners. And, of course, he, I know that he's especially uh, responding to what they think about him personally because he has been dogged out, show in and show out in regards to his attitude, his weight, the way he looks on the sidelines. They have picked up on everything and every mistake that he has made. So that, that's, that was a personal comeback to me from him to the rest of the world. And when he was asked if he was worried about bulletin board material, he basically says, I don't spend any time on it. I'm focused on the real stuff. Uh, and then he said, well, what am I supposed to say? <laughs> Boy, dude, if this is like in the streets, you know it would be a lot of cussing and trash talking. You know that, right? That's, <laughs> this is just street talk. But, you know, in the proper uh, setting. Because mm-hmm. he's out there saying, like, bring it on, fool. You know what I'm saying? Let's do this. <laughs> right? I mean, that's basically what he's saying. I love it. He's throwing the gauntlet down. When was the last time you heard a coach say something Jimmy like Johnson that? before the NFC Championship game in 1993. There you go. go. Three-inch headline. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. You can put it in three-inch headlines. Yeah, I was thinking about that today. Did Jimmy know at that time when he said that that he would be out the door in a couple of months? <laughs> <laughs> so, wow. but Jimmy's sitting there going, you know, it doesn't matter what I say. I'm, I'm, I'm leaving anyway, so yeah, it doesn't matter. Just be real. There's, there's he, no egg on my face. I, I think he walked out the door. It wasn't uh, like he was kicked. I don't know. No, no. Yeah. no, that's right. But, but He wanted out, and got, Jerry gave him this big hoop to jump through. Yeah, there you go. And it, $2 million. It was, dollars it was really, so mutually it was, beneficial so, for so both. So now my question is, was that on Jerry's, uh, Jimmy's mind before that NFC Championship game when he said you can put called into Randy Galloway's show on WWE? WBAP mm-hmm. the Thursday night before the game, saying you can many, put it in three inch headlines. We many, will win the ball game. How many Heinekens later do you yeah. have? <laughs> <laughs> well, and remember, he had already flirted with Jacksonville 
and the Giants, was it? There was there was two teams that he had already flirted with. Oh, so in his I mind, it was that. a win-win situation right? yeah. for him. And now here we are talking about it three decades later still. Mm-hmm. All right, you want to get to the real news of the yeah, day? Yeah, Tony Pollard uh, did not practice again today. And he said it would be a game time decision, and basically said what he has is a case of plantar fasciitis, Uh-oh. which That's is not good. good. That's not good. And he even has been told or repeated it that you're almost better to tear it than to just suffer the. Now, did he did he not say that he tore it? He that part I didn't hear. Okay, well, Michael Gel, I'll just say that Michael Gelkin has tweeted that uh, Tony Pollard says he tore his left plantar fascia during the 58-yard touchdown run versus the Saints. Okay, uh, and, and it's really going to be a game time decision, is what Pollard is quoted as saying. He said he still feels pain from his plantar fascia tear. They, his quote was, they say once you tear it, it actually heals better, and you don't feel it as much. I'm waiting until I get to that point. Okay. So can you play on, on a, a – It's hard. Torn, I hear if it's torn, torn plantar fascia, yeah. and, I'm like, and you're going to be a game-time decision? Right. That's what it's I'm better, saying. It's, and, but it's better to tear it. But can you tear it and still play? That's uh, my thing. Well, we're going to find out on game time. <laughs> uh, I wonder what the internet says about it. Oh yeah, we uh, well, I'm sure that some doctor will have the, some <laughs> the same doctor, pro football doc, the is, same doctor that diagnosed I, Dak's shoulder. Right? I guarantee you, pro football doc's getting tweeted at right now. Yeah. Tell us about a torn plantar fascia and how quickly Tony Pollard can be back. I did look up. On some MD.com deal. Oh, I bet. Okay. (laughs) Do you want to hear what I. Of course, conspiracy theory. The injury (laughs) is usually quite painful, and therefore, initial (laughs) treatment is generally oriented towards pain control with ice, crutches, and limited activity. As the symptoms begin to settle, often four to ten days after the original injury, and the the original injury occurred seven days ago, uh, last Thursday, it may be possible to do more weight bearing, provided that. Stiff-soled comfort shoes or a protective walker boot is used. At this point, gentle plantar stretching can be done. All right, fast forward. However, what says return to reasonably normal standing or walking can occur relatively quickly in a few weeks. (laughs) I ain't got a few weeks. However, return to high-level sports requiring sudden change of direction or 58-yard touchdown runs... Oh, that's in there. Right? Explosive the power through the plantar fascia region can be quite prolonged in the order of months. Now we're going to see what what uh, kind of uh, treatment he can get to get there by Sunday. You know, um, <laughs> I, I believe it was four days into one, uh, yeah. four months it, into one, and uh, four days. I believe it was <laughs> Russell Maryland was having problems with that one year, and they ended up putting a kind of metal. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, f- uh, shoes right under the ball of underneath the, there mm-hmm. to because uh, it's basically a collapse of the arch. Right, it? right, exactly. And I remember Patrick Creighton, his rookie year, uh, suffered the plantar fasciitis uh, in rookie minicamp. And I remember he did it the first day. The second day, he went out there and kind of limped through practice. Mm-hmm. And we got done, and and I found out what he had, and I said. How how you doing that? And he goes, I'm a was he sixth seventh round yeah. draft choice. He From goes Northwest uh, Oklahoma yeah. <laughs> State. And, and he said, State. And he said, <laughs> and he said, uh, he just threw that in there. <laughs> right. No, there is. Is it, it State? I I believe, yeah. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead, man. It was a double directional <laughs> state. A and M. <laughs> Even worse. Northwest Oklahoma State oh, A&M. Oh, my God. Um, he said that, hey, he goes, Bill Parcells is the coach. He goes, I, remember I can't pull myself out. I think Bill was on his butt. Was that doing the hard knocks thing? I think I saw it on the news where he was kind of on his case. Why are you limping around? You know, he could know, you you could see that. Right. Patrick was was fighting through it, and Parcells, you, he was testing him. I, I think he appreciated the effort, but he wasn't happy with the results. Yeah, he was gonna he was gonna come down hard on it. Yeah, he did. absolutely. So, mm-hmm. so we'll see. Game time, but Edo Smith probably better get ready. 
because Corey Clement, I mean, he's on the roster, mm-hmm. but you probably need three of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I would imagine he's probably a little bit more prepared to play in a game than a rookie free agent uh, running back. So, so these guys, they're not practice squad players. Well, Ito is on the practice squad Ito's right now, but he is, squad, as we talked about yesterday, he's years. played yeah, in the league. He's so. been in the league three So years. then we still have two spots. Uh, they There's two spots open because <clears throat> they, they're they going to place uh, Noah Brown on injured reserve. Right. He's got a groin, and I think Bill said, uh, Bill, Mike said it was going to be two to three weeks. Uh, oh, so man, that's tough. <clears throat> now they have room to activate both Randy Gregory, if they want, and Neville Gallimore. There you go. And that would take up the, the two spots. Okay, but and then you, the can promote, you can yeah, promote, you can promote a guy off the practice squad. Okay. As ah, long as you, you have go. eight offensive linemen active. Mm-hmm. Two guys you can promote each two week. Two guys, right. And Cedric Wilson, you said he's ready. He practiced, yes. Mm-hmm. He was out there practicing. Uh, no Noah Brown, um, no... Well, the other guys that weren't practicing weren't out there practicing. Um, so Wilson started on the cords, but he moved into practice. So mm-hmm. that was a good sign. It sounds like Donovan Wilson is going to be out for a couple more weeks. Ah, okay. Because uh, somebody asked me today, they noticed that Malik Hooker's snaps have improved. Is he getting better? And it's like, well, Donovan no Wilson choice. has been out. Right. So somebody had to absorb those snaps. Um, uh, at least Pollard, when he was doing his rehab, he was like dressed like he was going to practice. But yeah, I don't believe he did. I didn't see see that uh, any indication that he was going to. Uh, and Ezekiel Elliott was out there fully dressed and ready to go through an entire practice after he did his little ride on the stationary bike mm-hmm. during special teams. So. Was it is it the training camp Zeke Elliott or is it the busted knee and ankle? You know Zeke when Elliott? I see him running, he, he looks fine to me. Uh, you know, and it's it's a it's a ligament deal he's got going. Uh, you know, he finally said no, it's not a bone bruise. Uh, so, you know, and he keeps pointing out that you know it won't get better until you get an extended period of rest. But that as long as he can warm it up, he's he's good to go. So. Uh, we're going to find out. All right. Uh, so Mike McCarthy back today. Yes. And uh, but Nashawn Wright. Uh, what's the still uh, uh, he's still Friday? On? I think his okay. day and is so to get back in. If he, so I guess they would have a decision to make or uh, on him. I mean, can't l- 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 let me throw it out. Oh, this that's way. right. Because if, if they, he's on COVID reserve, yeah. All right. What is the protocol on the return to the active roster? <laughs> Um, and and how much does the league over, <laughs> oversee that? As far as all right, your ten is it the ten days, and you have to have the two negative tests, or is it just ten days, and you're you have to be activated at that point? You don't have to be activated if I you have think, to have because you got to be asymptomatic, test. asymptomatic, right? Uh, and then I, I think what, what's to keep a team from stashing a guy for a weekend? Because everything you test goes to the NFL. Well, that's what I'm. So that's what I'm asking. So there's no stashing. Okay, so <laughs> he's being tested every day. I would imagine. All right, How to dare get an NFL team to stash. get him back on the active roster. Right. Okay. And so once he gets those two negative tests or the 10 days is passed, if he hasn't tested positive again. Then and if he, he feels well. Uh, and if he feels well. Right. So there would be the area that right. would be, right. okay. But, it, uh, but I, I, was, I was assured that you can't fudge putting right. a guy on COVID reserve and, if right. it, he's not testing positive. Right. And, so that's, that's and that is be. why they have the rule the, that the practice squad guys can come up. Right. Uh, two of them can be uh, activated each week. And you can have a, a COVID call-up, too. It's right. A, it's you a free call-up after, so, so that, off oh. the practice squad. Okay. Right. Oh, yeah. So there, that's the that's an additional one if Nishan Wright – I mean, we hope Nishan Wright is feeling fine and he's back tomorrow. And uh, But if he wasn't, then that would be another roster spot that right. would be open exactly. to bring up Edo Smith or whoever. Yeah. Doesn't have to be the same position that that player plays. And by the way, the WFTs have some injury problems also with uh, their. Safe, Thomas is out. Um, Sweat is out. 
right. Uh, Chase Young is already out. Already out. Uh, their safety, Logan, no, not Logan. Um, uh, Collins. Collins. Yes. Landon Collins. Landon Collins. He, he, I think he and someone else are like in concussion protocol. Mm-hmm. Well, McKissick, the running back, McKissick. was in concussion yeah. protocol. I think maybe both of them were. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, they've got some injury problems also. Collins had a foot, Mick. Oh, foot? Okay. Is he going to play, yeah, Chris? Is he out? Well, he did not practice yesterday. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So, um, we're one. Those are very significant uh, the problems that they have. <laughs> you got to sweat Jimmy out. Davis. You've got. That's pretty significant when you think about how this team lives and breathes. They live by and, defense and tough running. Well, the thing is, Chase Young has been out for three weeks. Yeah. Uh, he tore his ACL, and they've won every game that he's right. been out. Yeah. But now you got sweat is out. Yeah. So that, that kind of just – Oh, the other guy in the concussion protocol was uh, Jamin Davis. Uh, Good player, linebacker. rookie linebacker out of yeah. Kentucky. He's, he, he, he's he, in concussion protocol? He DNP'd and guard. He's a starter? Uh, yes. Get, uh, guard Wes Schweitzer mm-hmm. uh, ankle did not practice yesterday either. Now, Jamin Davis, uh, he's he's a very explosive player. Uh, loved him in the draft. Uh, he, you know, he's really he's only been playing about twenty five to thirty snaps a game though for him, and mm-hmm. so. Um, but he's a guy he makes plays all over the field. Uh, I was just looking first round. He was nineteenth, nineteenth overall pick, uh-huh. first round draft pick this year. How he for much of the season he's been playing only twenty seven, thirty snaps a game. But the last couple of games against Seattle and Las Vegas, he was up in the mid fifties on his snap count. So, they so he's been, four... they've been using him more lately, and it, it's one of those things where he's a rookie probably, and they're you know it's a tough thing making that transition. They have four defensive linemen, first round draft picks, correct? They've got. Well, yep. they, that's what they they were known for. There are four defensive linemen, I believe, last right. year. And Chase Young is yeah. out, and Montez Sweat is out. Two of, the, my, two of those first point, round picks. I think my point is, so now the linebacker also was a first round pick. Right. That's so, pretty. Yeah, that's, yeah. That, I think they let you know where they're going. Yeah. You know, with this theme of this team, like right. a little defense. Yeah, maybe? I think they like defense. Yeah. <laughs> well, here's a here's a good one that you'll be interested in. Um, I saw in the Washington Times that the WFTs uh, are trying. That's what you're calling them now, the WFTs. No, I call them the Washingtons. Okay, I'm tired of the W football team. WWTF. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they beat the Cowboys both games last year, uh-huh. right? So they're trying to win three straight. The last time they beat the Cowboys three consecutive games. Everson remembers. <laughs> <laughs> was it <laughs> last game in '86? Uh huh. Both games in '87, though one was the strike game. That doesn't right. count. That doesn't right. count. And I think that's the, why I don't recall it. And yeah. then the first game in '88. Still. So they actually won f- f- four straight, but w- no, they actually with an won, asterisk. They so actually three won straight. three. Yeah, three. Well, straight. we you know we could always say I won in '15 season. The one win. Oh yeah, against the, the beat them against Washington. So, the, That's so right. you, they broke. You guys broke the. My only interception that season. Yeah, you broke the losing <laughs> streak. The final game or the final. Uh, yeah, it was the final game in '88 when Michael Irvin had his kind of coming out party game against uh, Dale Green. Right, and then you lost the next one, and then you beat them uh, in '89 mm-hmm. to end uh, to end the losing streak at. What was it? Was it 11? No, it was nine, I think. Mm-hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It was eight that season, eight. and then the last game of the 88 season. Right. So nine. Yeah. Overall. Yep. So. And then it was one, two, three. Oh, I can count. Seven straight losses to end the season that gets to. So the anyway, team. the percentage I does. I told you that. What you looking over there for? I'm the guy. I'm the guy. You're looking at pages. You got, maybe, you got reality right here. Maybe McCarthy was looking <laughs> it at. It reinforced it by counting. <laughs> McCarthy was looking at the percentages and said, well, they're not going to beat us three times in a row. That hadn't happened in 40 years. Uh, that's uh-huh. crazy. All right, we continue with more mix. Oh, I can't wait to see what Mickey's got on his legal pad mm-hmm. when we come back on Mix Shots in just stuff. a moment. 
Hey, Cowboys fans, ready to spice up your next watch party? Bring Yokiero guacamole and be the game day hero. Yokiero means I want, and we know you want great, fresh tasting, ready to serve guacamole for your home gating and tailgating events. Made with real avocados and the perfect blend of spices, it will be the star of any party. You can find us at your local Albertsons or Tom Thumb in the deli section. If you can't find it, talk to your store manager and tell them, Yo Quiero, Yo Quiero Guacamole. Brace yourself for an existential question. Has your butt been having enough fun lately? Have you been treating it well? Has it been going places? If not, then it's about time you start using SeatGeek. SeatGeek is the best way to get your butt tickets to live events. Just ask the thousands of other butts who have rated it the number one ticketing app. So what are you waiting for? Download the app now or visit SeatGeek.com to get tickets to sports, concerts, and live events and make your butt happy. SeatGeek, get your seat in a seat. How great would it be to travel to watch the Cowboys win on another team's turf? Pretty great. But honestly, just watching the game from anywhere but your house would be fun. Even a hotel bar with some guy named Phil from St. Louis who thinks Oakland still has a team. So whether you're traveling to the game or watching from your favorite vacation spot, book a place to stay on Hotels.com. Proud partner of the Dallas Cowboys. At AT AT&T, everyone, new and existing customers, get our best deals on every smartphone. Why? Because you deserve it. For turning your living room into your office and your gym. For teaching grandma how to video call and teaching her again. It's the button on your left, Nana. Okay, your other left. It's not complicated. Everyone deserves something new. So AT&T has given everyone new and existing customers our best deals with every unlimited plan on every smartphone, even the latest ones. AT&T may temporarily slow data speeds if the network is busy. Restrictions and exceptions may apply. Back, back, to Mick Shots. Give the gift of the Cowboys this season with a Dallas Cowboys United membership presented by Globe Life. It's the ultimate fan experience for the ultimate Cowboys fan. Memberships start at just 20 bucks and include an exclusive fan pack and VIP member experiences. Tis the season. Visit DallasCowboys.com slash United to get yours today. Very good. Very good. Mickey, in that book that you wrote on the rivalry between Dallas and Washington, uh, did you have a chapter on that 1987 replacement game during the strike in 87? Uh, No, because we wrote the book in the spring of 87. Is that old? Yes. Man. He missed all the good stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I'll bring it down tomorrow. I've yeah, got, I you still need got to. a copy. Of What's it, it called? Uh, Cowboys. <laughs> he wrote His the book. book. He hey, it's a long time ago. <laughs> he wrote I mean, the, the book. He written. Jeez. It was the Cowboy. Rich. Hail to the Redskins. No, it was Co- Cowboy, Cowboy Redskins rival. rivalry. Twenty Grady. Twenty greatest uh, games. The greatest. In, wow. Greatest games <laughs> in history. I don't even know how to look that up. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't even know how to look that up. What do we do? <laughs> so it was the 20 greatest games in history up until 1987. Right, and we, we picked 10 victories for each team. Okay. It was a Washington writer as well? Three as of Washington and me. You're outnumbered. I was. You were like you were like Tom Landry in that American to, Express commercial. I had to do extra work. Remember that, Emerson? <laughs> All the Redskins were around me, uh-huh. right? <laughs> Boy, you remember that one? Uh-huh. Oh, Do you really Did he have an arrow through his hat or something? <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness! He came through the little a, swinging oh. doors. What you got, said, Chris? What said, you got, Chris? Bill, it, do you really think two other writers could agree with Mickey? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I had to set them straight. That's right, baby. You damn right. Set and them and who do you man. think had to write, write the opening chapter? Right. Mm-hmm. Because the Cowboys had the better team uh, in the rivalry. Mm, overall. In mm-hmm. They wanted to sell books. <laughs> That's right. Thank yeah, you. they wanted to sell books. I like that. What do you mean? <laughs> so we're saying that. We didn't write the first game was a Cowboy victory. It was no. an overall about oh. the rivalry and explaining how it started. And the best games. But the best. And then the next chapters. Okay. Were the, the best, best games, games I remember from the rivalry, though, the Cowboys won all of them. Yeah, right. Yeah, that was, right? that's true, though. Yeah. But you know the what? The most fun games were the one that we won. They yeah, I don't remember any, any memorable games. Last minute when, we, when we interviewed guys. 
they remembered every play during of the victories. And then when you wa- ask them about a loss, yeah, I'm not <laughs> sure. Uh, I don't remember <laughs> that. Yeah. 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 yeah, it was pretty funny. <laughs> although, and it, although and it was pretty consistent, too. <laughs> although Everson seems to remember this replacement game for I some do, reason. I he do. got the details on who the quarterback mm-hmm. was for Washington. I was a union rep, so of course I was extremely upset. Such a leader I am. I got eight or uh, nine of my guys, superstars, all crossed over for that game. Mm. So I, they were all scab players, and we were talking about the quarterback. Tony Robinson Tony out Robinson. of Tennessee. Called them scabs. How about that? Hey, man, that's what they were, guys. That's not mince the history that we got to go forward and with. Tony it. Robinson's the one that came out of jail to lead Washington in to there? the victory. He, he was arrested in Knoxville on charges of distributing cocaine, mm-hmm. critically damaging his prospects in the NFL. Went undrafted in 1986, and in the 87 strike, he played in one game. <laughs> After starting replacement quarterback Ed Rubbert was injured, he led uh, the oh Washington to an improbable 13 to 7 win over a Cowboys team that featured a number of players who Randy had White, crossed Tony the picket Dorsett, line during the strike. Doug Cosby, Danny White. His Come role on. his role was loosely portrayed by both Keanu Reeves and Michael Jace in the 2000 film the replacement. That's there it, you bro. go. That's it. I so once that. again, because the Cowboys were the opponent, they were able to make a movie and about see, it. And see, forget the books, man. I'm right here. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm right here. I can tell you what you want to know in regards to that. Well, you asked me, mm-hmm. and so I just said yeah. what I knew That's off of Wikipedia. Yeah. All right, Mickey, what's on your legal pad today? Um... That could be a segment right there. That is something. I Did just, you that's know something. that is something? <laughs> since we're talking about Everson Walls, <laughs> the Cowboys are tied for the NFL lead in receptions with, I mean, interceptions, interceptions. with New England at 19. New England always seems to have a bunch of. And picks. the last time, Number twenty-seven. What's the kid's name? He's amazing. Mm-hmm. The yeah. last time the Cowboys had 19 picks through the first 12 games of the year was 1999. If you can believe this, they had 20. And they finished with 24 interceptions. That's all? Hmm. Yeah. The, the last <laughs> last four games didn't turn out so well. Almost half of that in but, but, but get this. Um, they had – where's my note at? They had 11 guys with interceptions that year. And, and Dexter Coakley led with four. And then there was one, two, three, four guys – with three. And there Can you name them, by the way? Four guys with three. Yeah. What year was it? 99. No, I can't name them. George Teague, mm-hmm. uh, Isel Reese. I thought you were going to say Isaac Hope. <laughs> <laughs> Deion Sanders. Yeah. And Dwayne Hawthorne. Wow. Who are these people? I mean, besides Deion. <laughs> right? <laughs> So they had, yeah, that was, uh, that was amazing. Golly, man. It, and it, but that lets, lets you know how fleeting your fame is. I mean, when I say fame, this guy had three interceptions for the Cowboys. No one, well, I don't. I have no idea who two of those people are. <laughs> and they had they don't they donned the star. You don't remember you know, Izell Reese or I Dwayne do not. Hawthorne? Hawthorne, especially I don't remember. Izell Reese, if I remember correctly, was a corner that they turned to safety or vice versa. And I'm sure they were great players. And I mean the, Dwayne Hawthorne that's was crazy. kind of a guy, but he he wasn't bad. Yeah. But, you know, low round draft choice or free agent. So this year, the 19, 12 of them are by two guys, Diggs and Anthony. Anthony Brown. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, you mentioned 27 for New England. That's J.C. Jackson. He's got seven picks for New England. So he's two behind Trayvon. You know where he's from? I can click and find out I for sure you. I sure would like to know. All right. He is from uh, Florida as well as Riverside Community College and Maryland. There you go. Well, very good. All right. So – Yes. Nine picks for Trayvon right now. we got five games left in this season. Are we willing to project how many Trayvon's going to wind up with? Eleven. You got eleven? He's going to tie. Twelve. I want to say thirteen. I really want to say thirteen. When you're looking at, what, we got five games left? Five games left. We need these games. So Mm -hmm. one more. every time we play well, he has something to do with it. You know, his, his interceptions seem to steady us or spark us. Or save us, mm-hmm. you know. So yeah. one more, he ties Mel Renfro's. Yeah, one for ten. 
10, which Hall was, of Famer, the, Mel Renfro. was the Hall record of until Everson came around with in 11. Right, yeah. in and Last nine is the season. most since 85, five. Five, right? Yeah. So Who did it in 85? Uh, some just dude, ask them. Some do. Some do. Should be Hall of Famer. Yeah, should That's be. right. <laughs> just give me a ring of honor. We're going <laughs> <we're gonna> to <laughs> keep working on this. Yeah, we're going to work on that. But, we're uh, we're, we're going to have our, our <laughs> weekly Everson no, Wall no, we, we segment. Need a, we need a sign right here. Right? You know, something like, you know. So what is more um, amazing? Is it the uh, – or? Is it the 10 sacks by a rookie linebacker slash defensive end? Or is it nine picks by a second-year cornerback? That's a very good question. That's like saying what's more impressive, Harvey Martin's, what, 20-plus mm-hmm. sacks in a season or 11 interceptions in a season? Hmm. I, I guess I like the. I like the, the I kind of like the, I like the strength of it all. What are you doing, man? <laughs> <laughs> he, look, he, he looks at me first. Of course, it's, uh, Everson again. You know, that's not me. My snooze is off, brother. I'm, I'm here. I, I thought maybe that Chris, was, Chris that had was, a drop there. That was about me. interception. That was, that, was that, that, was, that was an ad on the Pro yes. Football yeah, Reference you page. You close that stuff, hey. man. <laughs> Careful. It was a Pro Football think, Reference page. I think with the violence. I think the picks. Are you saying that just because Everson's no, here? No, <laughs> no. Think about it. The picks. No one's had more than 10 interceptions since he had 11. Mm-hmm. And that's 40 years ago. So, sacks. How long did it take D. Ware to break Harvey's record? Well, the part 30, of it, 30 on years, the, it's 30. the rookie part of it on the sacks, too. Yeah, but just sacks overall. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I mean, I mean the interceptions overall. I mean, yeah, the sacks is a rookie. So Demarcus Ware had eight. That was the the rookie record mm-hmm. from '82 on. Mm-hmm. So um, I think it's harder to get picks than it is interceptions. I mean, harder to get picks than sacks. Sacks. I think I just love sacks so much because it helps me me get picks. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it, it's you know just the relief sometimes of just like you know we're done. It's over. You know what I mean? He got the sack. We're done. Let's get off the field. You know, and I think the the violence of it all, the suddenness of it all, you know, and and the conclusion of it all is just, to me, so uh, violent. You know, that's what I like about it. Just Harvey coming around that corner. You remember how fast he used to come? Mm -hmm. He don't remember because he was in Chicago. That's right. You remember how fast he used to come around Mm -hmm. that corner? I mean, I didn't even know much about how they used to dip the shoulder. Uh, Bob Ward came in with the Asian guy who taught us, taught them how to use the the sticks in the wood Uh and just watching them work their hands. And and, and I just thought it was amazing uh, watching someone that big beat someone even bigger than him. And to get to the quarterback like that, that whole sequence, it's, it's pretty exciting. It really is. So take, like, the last interception he got in the Saints game. Mm-hmm. They're playing basically a cover two. He's trailing underneath. He's mm-hmm. got help over the top. Yeah, so now you can, you can take a chance, right? And he was right there, Johnny, on Most the Most guys, that's, he played the cover two. I, I did the same thing in Buffalo um, my rookie year. You got to get somebody over the top to try to hit that little soft spot. I, I was able enough to, to face inside and get mine. That's a tougher move to turn over the other shoulder and get it the way he got it. His back, my back was to the sideline. He was facing the sideline as a receiver. I thought that was very impressive. Of course, it was a bad pass, but that's we live off of bad passes. Uh, you just don't want bad passes to become completions. How, I guess uh, think about how many interceptions he would have if if Parsons didn't have ten sacks. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's what I said about Ed Jones. Ed knocked down like five of my interceptions. <laughs> he leads the team in knockdowns, but I mean that's that's cutting into. Hey, my Ed, numbers. let that pass let go. Let that go next time. <laughs> of course, I get toasted. Ah, where were you, man? So yeah. All right, we continue with more mix shots in Pick just a poison. moment. Pick your poison. The Medal of Honor is our country's highest military award for valor in combat. More than 40 million individuals have served in the armed forces since the Civil War. Fewer than 4,000 have received the Medal of Honor. The National Medal of Honor Museum will be a place to preserve these legacies and inspire America. It's being built right next door to the Dallas Cowboys in Texas. Help us honor our country's greatest heroes. Learn more and get involved at mohmuseum.org. 
Want to use what the pros use? How about the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black? Right now, you can get the Jack Black Starter, a curated collection of Cowboys locker room favorites for just 10 bucks with free shipping. The starter includes four Jack Black skincare favorites plus a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Go to getjackblack.com slash cowboys and use the code word TEAMJB. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys. The Jack Black Starter, 10 bucks, free shipping. The Cowboys way where 16 Hall of Famers and five championships shows us what success looks like. Where turkey is always the second best part of Thanksgiving Day. Where we are all defined by one single thing, the star. Where we as fans know it's our job to keep the tradition going. Bank of America is proud to be the official bank of the Dallas Cowboys and to support the quest of living life the Cowboys way. Copyright 2020, Bank of America Corporation. Before there was a draft, you could size up a cowboy by three simple factors. The crease in his hat, the bend of his brim, and his unbending attitude. A man Stetson didn't just protect him from what life threw at him. It projected a rugged, unstoppable spirit. Stetson hats are still American-made with pride right here in Texas. They're still the unofficial crown of all self-respecting cowboys. And Stetson is proud to be on the field with America's team. Find a retailer nearest you at stetson.com slash cowboys. Back, 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 to mixed shots. Registration for holiday youth camps is now open. Don't miss Dallas Cowboys Football Academy and Dallas Cowboy Cheerleaders Dance Academy camps on December 21st at the Star in Frisco and December 22nd at AT&T Stadium. Space is limited, so register today at dallascowboys.com slash academy. All right, the um, Cowboys offensive line, is this the first time since the season began that all hands are on deck for this game? Is that right? Am I right with that? No, because the first game, Zach Martin. That's what I'm saying. Right. I'm since, since, since before the season before started. The, the season first time started. all year that they've had they have all hands on deck this week. I believe that is correct. Can if you he, say that about the defense too? Uh, if indeed Gallimore and Gregory are ready to go, hmm. yes, that's interesting. Mm. Uh, Brent Urban, he's out for the season. Right, he had surgery. Right, right. so he you don't have. Him. He really wasn't a starter though. But and what did you say about him? It's still it's not all hands on deck from the well. I mean, of the from the, the but the, but my point on the, the offensive, starting four. But my point on the offensive yes. line is that the the guys and I'm talking the top seven guys that you had to start the year that you were expected to use at some point during the season, you got them healthy this week for the first time all year. All yes. of them. Yeah. yeah. Because now you can you can start if you want DeMarcus Lawrence left, Randy Gregory right. You can put uh, Neville Gallimore at one tackle, and uh, I would imagine Watkins or Digizua as, as the other tackle. And I would imagine Watkins is more of a nose tackle. Gallimore is more of a three technique. So, yeah. Uh, and, and if you think about it, even in the season opener, Lawrence hadn't played, you know. I mean, one he, game. I mean he, he played one game, but that opener, he hadn't had any contact in training camp. Um, I think he got in like maybe 43 snaps, something like that. That's why he looks so good against the right? Saints. He yeah, fresh hungry. legs, right? He was hungry and fresh legs. And Randy Gregory, if you can believe this or not, was starting the first season opener of his career. Think about that. Think about Randy Gregory was in the race for sack leader well, in the NFL. Well, he had five at that before <laughs> so he got hurt. He got hurt. Yeah. So here we are, got these guys back. Oh, my goodness. The potential of what we can do with these guys is amazing. Having them on the field all at the same time, I'm hoping it adds up to what we think it adds up to. And then use Micah Parsons however you want to use him, right? You can move Demarcus Lawrence inside on the nickel and have Parsons be an edge rusher. Do but you now even you can't, need him now? You can't at, double at the team. Edge? I mean, in nickel at asking, some point. As a, yeah. No, no, he's the linebacker. Yeah, yeah. And I can have him stand up in the middle the way they were doing at points with he and Randy Gregory. But even in the nickel, yeah. What would you do with him? What, what, would you put him on the end? Well, dime? Would you put him on the end? Because you still have Gregory and, and, and D. Law. 
Like, man, that's that's a good uh, problem to so, have. That's a good luxury to have. And what kind of problem would that be for you if you were the quarterback? Because oh, I'm when looking you at came the, to the line of scrimmage, I'm looking at it's the, like, where's 1-1? One, one? <laughs> right in front of you. Is he in front yeah. of me? Is he out to the side? Is so he what, dropping if you were coverage? To, I, just, I, I think if we're full strength, then I want my two ends being who they are, D-Law and Gray. Oh, for, for most every down. Yes, 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 absolutely. And having him in the and, middle. And, you know, but how many, how many, you know, Gregory's been out a month, so how many snaps can he get? But, you know, That's now true. That's you, true. you mix in Basham, you mix in Chauncey Golston. Uh, Parsons' uh, quote was, uh, uh, you know, he, he liked being at the end, but now he sees it cutting down to about, you know, 10 to, right. to 12 plays, and maybe then, maybe at defensive and end, then because he, Gregory isn't, isn't quite ready. And then when they ask him where he's playing, he goes, noon Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> He's great. Mm-hmm. He is absolutely great. How about this? Also, you talked about full strength. Mm-hmm. This dawned on me, and I asked McCarthy, and he had to think about it first. Today was the first padded practice they've had in a month. The mm-hmm. last padded practice they had was heading into the Atlanta game because he, I thought it was heading into the Kansas City game, mm-hmm. but he remembered that they cut back because the next week was going to be short, mm-hmm. so he lightened up the practice that week going into Kansas City. So they didn't have one before Thanksgiving, and because of COVID, they certainly didn't have one before um, after the Raiders game. That Atlanta game turned out pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So maybe many, practice is important. How many uh, more do they have left? <laughs> how many more? Padded practice. I think they're getting pretty close to the end because you can't save – like a whole bunch for the last two or three <laughs> like weeks. Like your day off. So, yeah, save, right. Yeah. Uh, Otherwise, you your lose sick them. days. Better take save them. your sick days for vacations. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, and, and how about this? So if you we were talking about history, we went back to '87. Today, thirty years ago, was the last edition of the Dallas Times Herald. Really? Mm. So that's the last job you had. Last, yeah, yeah. yeah, right. That's right. Last time you worked, <laughs> a full time. No, okay. full time. <laughs> then I had many jobs <laughs> after that. Yeah, uh, November, uh, December eighth was the Sunday game against the Saints. Congratulations! When to we the found out, now. yeah, mm-hmm. when we found out we were without jobs, <laughs> and our uh, after the Saints, you said during the game during we the found game? out oh, before it started. That. Before yeah, that's it right. It started. Sunday morning. This is that man? Sunday morning. We just played the Saints. That's pretty cool. And yeah. uh, <laughs> our our little bit of uh, levity was well, if you need another good clip to get a job, you better make it today because ain't gonna be no. <laughs> Your best, your best story today. So you were able to write a story that day. There, there was a there yes, was a paper on a Monday. Paper, they put the paper. Last edition was December 9th. That yeah. Monday. Yeah, that Monday. Okay. Yeah. And you still have it? I do. I've got several copies. So what would happen if you say, you know what, I'm not doing a story? I guess it had been okay, <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, was there? A, you not just to, felt not to pry, but was there any severance? Um, I mean, or. How much do were most of the guys? They paid us for guys. like you know back then you didn't get overtime so you got days off yeah. so you had days so, off accumulated. So it paid for you not we to have those. used your vacation <laughs> right, right? That's why you saved the vacation days. And we did get our vacation paid too. Oh man, yeah. see that's why people do this, man. Employees, you know, come on, we're not screwing anybody. We're but nobody screwed. was celebrating, let me tell you. And I think yeah. the next day, so Go that on Tuesday on we. Made met i mean we had come in we had to clear out right they frisked us on the way out too by the way oh sure come on we man. weren't stealing anything like uh, a computer uh yeah and the computers we had <laughs> yeah. back then were some <laughs> bulky goofy things yeah. right they frisked you and i remember we all went you might have taken a pocket calculator or something. yeah we all went to the west end for lunch that day and it was like one o'clock or two o'clock and the lady goes you want something to drink? And everybody's like, yeah, give us some beer. Yes. <laughs> Heck, yes. And I think for all the years I worked there, I never had a beer at, during lunch mm-hmm. or anything, right? And it was like, yeah, maybe you give us two. This is the time. Yeah, absolutely. That, 30 years ago. Wow. Time flies. Mm-hmm. And here I am. Mm-hmm. When did you start working for the Cowboys? 2000. The summer, yeah, the summer of 2000. Okay. Yeah, and I was here, freelancing before that. 
No and, job was too big or paid too little. You just <laughs> did it. That's right. And here you are digging from the bottom with the rest of us. That's right. Yep. That's crazy. All right. Well, tomorrow will be a Kicks. fabulous football Friday as the Cowboys will win. I, okay, I'm going to go ahead and say it. Say it. Yep. Shoot. Say what it. my pick is going to be the Put Cowboys end line. will win will they this win by? game. That yes. will be the only question tomorrow. <laughs> the answer is tomorrow. And on by the way, hold shot. on one more that from the press conference <laughs> that got buried, McCarthy did put a historical video before the team practice this mo- or during the team practice this morning on the Cowboy Redskins rivalry. Mm-hmm. He so said he thought that was important for them to understand how that how, how big that game is for the fans up there too. Very good. Yeah. Very good. So he thought that very was a good, good history like lesson. That. Yeah. Absolutely. That's what happens okay. when you have a bunch of young kids on the team. That's right. So we'll bring the book down tomorrow. Okay. And see you tomorrow. Go Cowboys. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!